welcome to another Turning Tuesday. This week, I was inspired by the mystical Aurora Australis, the Southern Lights. I went out and captured these Aurora time lapses, October 11th, 2024. These ones are from the morning, and I captured them between the hours of 3 o'clock and sunrise. I was inspired, so I went and grabbed a piece of wood that I had absolutely no idea what it was, and I decided to throw it out to the community and to see if you know what it is. So I've got a couple of end grain shots there, and showing you what the wood looks like with just a fresh cut. Moving into a sharpen this week, I am using the skew with the square sides and I'm just giving a quick touch up on the 180 grits. You may notice I actually spend quite a bit of time here. Last time I used this, I did not sharpen it. It's been sitting for a while and it's got a bit of grit built up. Starting this process, I decided to design almost a story stick. So I measured out 36 centimeters. And the reason for that is I was taking a leaf from the Harry Potter universe and the elder wand in that, yes, Dumbledore's wand, was 36 centimeters long. Now, I also wanted to take a few other designs from that with a couple of beads along it, or large beads, and I was then going to dremel them out. Uh, that didn't pan out and you'll see why. Not only will you see why, I'll give you a quick explanation. Uh, anyone who's new, welcome to Turn In Oz. I am human, I make mistakes, and I make plenty of them. I also try and work through them and explain what happened and how I'm overcoming it. And let's move into my first mistake. I've now mounted it in the jaw, that's fine. And here's my mistake. I forgot to press record on the close-up detail angle. So I've got the GoPro overhead, but I forgot to hit record on that phone. Shout out to the community. Now, you'll notice here that I switched to only using two fingers and I'm barely touching it. This is because I got a comment from Frank in the comment section on Get Skewed, turning Tuesday, the Tazzy Oak Streamline, part of the Sid Challenge. And I decided to give it a crack and put the footage in. I'm the first to admit it didn't feel natural and it didn't feel like I had full control. So I kind of went back to the way I was doing it and that's more just supporting the angle of the tool less than letting the tool control what it wanted to do. So what I'm doing is I am flattening it out. I've done the first half trying to get it down. Uh, I'll turn the tip around and just do a little scrape in using the entire length of the blade. Get it nice and square. As you can see, the tool's not bouncing, so I move to the other end. Taking in some of Sid's advice there of starting at the ends and working my way in. Now, doing a roughing cut, I was being rough as guts and just pushing through, and it worked well. So, as you can see, I'm using the flat edge on the tool to see if it's bouncing. If it's bouncing, it's not flat. And then I go back and give that section a pass to see what's going on. This is just a quick and dirty method so you don't have to turn the lathe off to see if it's round. Uh, in the middle, I wasn't quite sure what was going on there because it was still getting a little bit of bounce. Now, as I move into the video a bit more, I will cover Chatter because Chatter got real on this one. Now, I've realized my mistake and I've turned the other camera on. So what I'm doing now is I am transferring the story stick onto the now round piece of wood. So what I'm doing is making it visible. So I extended the solid bands and I am now just turning the lathe on using the speed and rotation so that I don't have to spin it by hand. And double checking where my lines are, making sure the story stick still works. And I am happy with where we're at. Now I'm going to move the tool in and get ready to start cutting. I'm going to start with the pointy side down and create myself a little groove to start working. I'm going to flip the tool over and use it to create the bead shape. So that's almost like a bowl shape. So it's a nice rounded semicircle. 
and the full bead is both sides so I didn't I think I included one in the design anyway so starting with the pointy side I got that groove working and then I was able to get in there and start that groove now I like to use the pointy side down when I am trying to create a cove as you can see here so what I do is I start the tool on a 45 degree and I sweep with it turning for the bead I like pointy side up and I'm not entirely sure if this is the correct way to do it I'm sure someone will tell me probably Sid and I'm always open to suggestions on how I can do things better and stop destroying my projects. Anyway, so what I was going for was a bead on the end, so a nice semicircle on the end and then a cove on the inside edge of that. And I was going to Dremel it out and put some nice designs on it. I just didn't. Mainly because I started getting frustrated because I kept making mistakes and yeah, the rest is history. Now, as you may notice here, I'm coming in with the pointy side up and that doesn't go so well for me. I came in on the very wrong angle and I learned my lesson. I just haven't realized it while I am turning yet. I knew I probably was missing a chunk. I just didn't realize I was missing that much of a chunk. So I went away from that and I started working on the bead and cove again. And happy with how that's coming out, I now move up to a flat spot that I was going to work on originally. And then I was going to gradually bead them down in. So yeah, I'm just using it as a scraper at the moment. Now, I decided to start to bead that down and I heard a much deeper sound that usually indicates that you are not getting a plain cut out of it. So, I decided to inspect, realized that's where the chunk was missing and it was a big chunk. So, now I'm back to the drawing board on what needs to be done. I decided to go back to the end that I know what I'm doing with and just start refining that while I'm thinking about my next move. So I decide that after this I am going to get away from the end that I've now made extremely thin and start working on the rest of the wand. So I'm going to move up and start by putting in a V groove and start shaping some of the other design features. Now you can see I almost went in with the tip there. I didn't want that because I was still trying to get a large bead in the middle there. So here we go, starting that V groove and I'm just coming in with the pointy end, coming from the left, then the right, then giving a little wiggle and repeat until I'm down to the thickness that I'm happy with. Now from that V groove, I am going to try and put a bead on either side of it. So my idea was going for a deep V groove in between two beads and it's not quite how it worked out now as you can see there i had a little tool run away and i'm just going to erase that no one saw it nope nope nobody saw it okay so moving back to these and i am trying to get that shape working my main focus here is having some nice fingertip designs so i'm not intentionally going for anything right now I just want something there I don't want it to be too plain so I'm sitting here arguing with myself as to what this design's going to be and then I decide eh, it's still a bit thick I don't know so I just keep working until I get somewhere that I'm happy with Right now I'm trying to refine that shape. I've decided that I was going to mirror the handle base by doing a bead and a cove and I don't think that's how it remained. Alright so 
So far it's going okay, and I decide a few things are a bit too big, so I'm going to try and reduce the size a little bit, and try and make it a little bit more finessed. To help with that, now I get the little detail tool out and get rid of some of the deeper grooves. And then I grab my spindle gouge and try and put some finer detail on. Also using this little scraper. And this tool is a bit blunt. I probably should have sharpened it. I just didn't. Anyway, trying to get rid of some of those tool marks. And I'm trying to open the base up there a bit more so that I can get the skew in later to separate using that scraper again to refine that almost bowl shape just a nice rounded bead there and right here I'm just rocking it so I'm starting in the center and rocking to the left and starting in the center and rocking to the right and trying to get a proper bead with the detail spindle gouge and then I decide that I'm going to change my design completely and do away with what I was doing there. So, my next move is to try and get the wand shaft under control and get it turned down. So, I'm going to win with some aggressive cuts. Probably not the smartest decision since I'm already noticing some strange noises. So, you'll see me put my hand behind a few times to work with the chatter. So I'm a long way out from the drive engine and I've only got a point in the far end. So I'm just trying to be careful. I don't want to destroy it at all. Now what I did there is I put a little V groove in the end about the 36 centimeter mark and I then worked down like Sid recommended from that edge and worked back to it. So. Yeah, as I said, there was quite a bit of chatter, and most of the chatter was dead center. It wasn't at each end, because each end is supported. So, you'll see me in the next couple of clips really using my hand on the back. And that works really well, because the skew leaves quite a nice flat finish to work with. So, it doesn't give you any random splinters. Now, if you hear that little noise there, it's a rat a tat a tat a noise. That is the chatter. So, what you'll see is I'm going to put my hand behind and really try and give it some support. So, over the next couple of clips while I'm getting this central section down, I will be running my hand along the back and wrestling with the angle as well as trying to stay on camera so that you can see the tool work. It was a lot of work and I really hope you enjoy the content. So, yeah, as I said, I'm just sitting there working this down slowly. I have got this in fast forward because it did take a while because I wanted to move really slowly and ensure the chatter didn't get too bad. So, when I put my hand over there, I put three fingers underneath the wood and I've got one finger resting on the tool. As you can see just there. Now, coming back the other way, which I'll be doing in a second, I do a different method again. Now, as I said, trying to keep the camera angle so that you can actually see the cutting as well as see what's going on, as well as I can see what's going on, was quite difficult. Now, as I said, this one, uh, that's the same method, it's just backwards. Um, there is one a bit later on where I do a completely different cut. Uh, I'll cover that when I get to it. Now, I am doing the very light cuts here because the slower you move and the more you let it cut itself, the better it's going to come out with chatter. Now you're about to see that other method that I was talking about. I've got my hand under the tool rest and one thumb on top. Now, that doesn't always work, 
because as you get further along the tool rest it gets thicker and then you can't get your hand to the wood anymore which is not great now I'm barely holding the handle of the tool at this stage I'm mostly holding the blade while I'm supporting it so I've got one hand on the ferrule there but as you can see I've just moved it halfway up the blade or three quarters the way up the blade and I've got my other hand on the actual thing so what I've got there is it's tucked in against my body and I am trying my best to make it work for me it was not ideal but again if I didn't nobody would see a thing now this is coming down quite nicely and I'm happy with the shape that it's coming out with. So what I'm going to do is take that down with a very deep peeling cut. I wasn't aiming for smoothness, I was just aiming to get it done. So just using the quick peeling cut there and just getting it to a shape that I'm happy with. Now the overall shape of this is now done. Uh, there was a couple of minor changes that I made halfway through because I noticed some cracks developing. So we'll see them as we go. Now I haven't actually done so this week so I want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching and supporting the channel. It really is appreciated and as you saw your feedback is taken on board and that's just because I am trying to make a better channel. I want the content that you want, so without your feedback, I can't deliver that. So it is great that people are jumping in the comments and working with me so that I can deliver something that they want to watch. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, I've got one too many. I do not like this anymore. So I am now going to press the delete button. Goodbye, bottom little beady thing. Again, coming in with that little peeling cut and getting rid of it completely. So I will now reshape that one and get it back the way I want. I'm going to use the detail tool for that. And yeah, I'm just using the detail tool to try and refine and clean up any of the additional tool marks. And in this instance, I actually chose to redesign something on the fly. Instead of having it coved, I decided to go with a flat spot. And I actually really enjoy that. So when you hook your finger in that on the finished product, it actually comes up quite nice. Now, I noticed here that there was a little crack on the outside of that, so I decided to take it down a little bit, and then I got the skew back out to clean it up properly. Now, I missed the record button on the first grit, so I decided to just fast forward, because as we know, sanding is boring. So, moving through, and yeah, some absolutely fun sanding, riveting, absolutely love it, how could you not? My sarcasm does not yield such great results. Alright, so what I'm doing here is I am using my finger to try and fill out any rough spots, and then I'm going with the grain, and then I am folding the layer in between and getting in those grooves now I did at one point stop and grab a stick and get in on those coves so I couldn't quite get my fat fingers in there and so I grabbed a piece of dowel I think it's six mil dowel and I went and used it on the inside of the sandpaper Alright, so now I am using the air compressor and just blowing out the pores. So I've taken this up to 600 grit. Next I'm going to put some methylated spirits on. Some places in this world call this denatured alcohol. So in Australia we call this methylated spirits and what I'm using that for is trying to clean up the pores because I'm 
sure that there is a lot of dust still caught in there. So what I did was I kept working it until I was getting no brown off it, at which point I was happy. And then I let it spin for a little while to dry off properly, and then I applied a oil finish, same chopping board oil as I do the bowls, and then I put beeswax on. So here we are applying the first coat of oil. As you can see, there is a little bit of color shift there. Not as much as some of my other projects. The chatoyance in this one is there, but it's nowhere near as strong. Still quite beautiful though. It's a nice subtle color shift between the gold and reds. So this wood is a reddy brown. It's not a rich brown. It's definitely got a lot of red to it. And as I said, I don't know what it is. It's a mystery wood to go with the mystical Aurora. Now, I did my typical finish with the oil. I did three layers, I let it soak in, and then I came back for some beeswax. Now, you'd think putting finish on would be the end of the mistakes, wouldn't you? Wouldn't be turning Tuesday without a mistake towards the end, would it? Anyway, we'll cover that when we get to it. For right now, this is looking absolutely gorgeous. My next step is I have to get it from between centers. So I have to cut away the end that has the live center. And that's going to be my next step. So what I'll do is I will go and get my detail spindle gouge and I will cut that down. So, just coving that over and slowly working it down until the point that it is almost completely off that live center. And then I will go back to supporting it with a mandrel saver. It's just a nice hollow one where it will support and allow me to cut the other end free. So there we are, I've put the mandrel saver on and we are spinning beautifully. So now I pull the skew out and I start cutting down. And while I'm here, I am going to cove it down and try and get almost a perfect round down there. I pull the detail gouge out and back to the skew. Now I get this really close, I think it's maybe three millimeters left. And with the weight on it, just a little wiggle and off we go. Now, I did have a think about this and decided to go with the way I did the ends on my wife's pointer a few months back. And what I did was mount my two inch uh, hook and loop with sandpaper on the central Jacob's chuck and anyone with keen eyes here will see what's wrong there. That's not the right angle. Anyway, so I fixed that up while it wasn't recording and put some sandpaper on and off we go. Starting with some 80 grit and then I quickly work it down. So I'm spinning it as much as I can using the skinniest parts to get nice long rotations as I go. And then I flip it around and my mistake is holding it at the far end because that's a very slow rotation which got me a couple of flat spots. I realized what was going on and I quickly changed to putting my hand up on the main shaft and trying to fix it. 
Okay, so I've done 80 grit, going to 180 grits, then I'll go 240, and I think I stopped there. Anyway, I've turned the lathe speed down, and as you saw, my hands were up on the shaft that time. And I jumped over a few recordings to make this easier. So I put some oil on, and here we go. My final mistake of the video. Now this section goes fine. I apply some beeswax to the pad and everything is going okay. I start buffing out the tip. Everything is going okay. I go up the shaft a little bit everything is still going okay I flip it around everything is still going okay however I got a little too eager and was not thinking clearly and decided to start buffing up the entire thing that had already been done while the lathe was spit spinning so, this is horrible. This absolutely destroyed the previous beeswax finish, and I had no choice but to remount it between centers and buff it off again. Yes, I just said to myself, oh shit, and I then continued. Now I'm at the point of, oh, uh, let's fix this. Come on, let's get this mounted between. Right, that's good enough. Let's go. Grab the wax rag and let's give it a touch up. As you can see, wax flying off already because it's got so much on there. Far too much. So I had to spend a bit of time and really soak that wax in and get excess off. And yeah, it ended up with an all right shine and I was quite happy with it in the end. Moving in to some photos now. And yeah, very pleased with how this came out. If you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends, do whatever you'll do. Have a wonderful day.